praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Our God is faithful. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Your God is faithful. And then he's also able. I'm just praying that this year will end with celebration in your life in Jesus' name. We have an inheritance to claim. And before the year runs out, you are going to have your inheritance. The promises of God are yes and amen in our lives. And before December runs out, you are going to have all that we expected. At the beginning of the year, everything will be done this very year in Jesus' name. There will be nobody in this church, in Lagos, in Nigeria, anywhere, that will say that this year was bad, this year is going to be good. January will begin a new year. And then we'll go to a new level. I just want to tell you that there's no tear to weep anymore. No sorrow in your heart anymore. All those challenges, they're gone in Jesus' name. And I'm believing that by the end of this year and beginning of next year, you look back like this, all the bad waters have gone under the bridge. New life. Everybody say new life. New life. Abundant life. Abundant. It has happened already. Amen. You are laugh. Amen. Where are you? You are laugh in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name. We are reminded of your faithfulness. And Lord, we pray your faithfulness will carry us through life in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, those who are not saved, save them. Amen. Those who are sick, heal them. Amen. Your prayers, set them free. Amen. All those in captivity, confinement, oh Lord, release your people in Jesus' name. Amen. We cancel barrenness from our church. Amen. And I pray, Lord, for those who have married for so many years and they're still looking up to you. Lord, I pray, sweep all the barrenness away in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who have got a set table and says, no job, the job has now arrived. Amen. The joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. Premature death, I cancel you. In every family, for our brothers and sisters, I cancel premature death in your life in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, open the gate and let us go in. And let everyone possess their possession in Jesus' name. The inheritance of your people grant unto them. All our leaders, all our overseers, all our pastors, all our workers, all our volunteers, all our, all our members, all our invitees. Oh Lord, I pray this day, open the heavens upon everyone. Shower your miracle upon everyone, Lord. Confirm every word here today. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you very much. You can see that we're looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Just one verse of scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We're looking at verse 16. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 16. Rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. Hear the Lord by the pen of Paul the Apostle inspired him. And he said, tell the church, there's just one thing to do, rejoice evermore. As we look at this chapter, you will see that the chapter is talking to children of God. It's talking to brethren, members of the family of God. Look at verse 1. It says, but of the times and the season, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. You see that what their brethren is writing to the brethren. And before he closes the letter, the epistle he says, brethren, rejoice evermore. And then he tells us in verse 4, he says, but ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should come, should overtake you as a seed. Again, he mentions them, he calls them brethren, and he says, brethren, rejoice evermore. Look at verse 14, in verse 14, he tells us, now we exhort you brethren, brethren, He's telling the brethren over and over. He says, if there's anything for us to do, it is to rejoice and to rejoice evermore. As we look at this chapter, you're going to find a lot of precepts, a lot of commandments. Do this, do this, do this. 
All those things he tells us to do, he doesn't tell us to do that anymore. He tells us in verse 14, for example, he says to one them that are unruly. You cannot do that ever more. Always you do that as occasion arises. And then he tells us in verse 15, see that none render evil for evil unto any man. It's not every time people are doing evil to you. He says when occasion arises and everybody does evil to you, pay them back with good. And that's when occasion arises. You cannot do that ever more. And he tells us, in verse, in verse 20 it says uh, despise not prophesying we don't prophesy every moment of the day but it says when it comes don't despise it and it goes on and on but it tells us amidst all these responsibilities here it says there is one you are going to do evermore rejoice always rejoice constantly rejoice habitually rejoice evermore it says whatever happens rejoice evermore it says whatever comes your way rejoice evermore it says at all times rejoice 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 evermore you see the text is said amidst other precepts and duties which are to be done as occasion requires but then it says this one is every time that means rejoicing is a lifelong journey joy evermore rejoicing in the lord evermore rejoicing in his presence evermore rejoicing for his provision evermore rejoicing because of his promises evermore rejoicing because of his power evermore be rejoicing because of his purpose rejoice in the lord evermore it tells you rejoice in christ rejoice in his salvation evermore rejoice in his service evermore rejoice in his sacrifice evermore rejoice in his sufficiency evermore he says when you think of God the Father there's something to rejoice about evermore you're thinking about Jesus Christ there's something to rejoice about evermore he says in the spirit for the operations of the spirit rejoice evermore for the manifestations of the spirit rejoice evermore for the preservation of the spirit rejoice evermore and for the revelation of the spirit rejoice evermore for his illumination inspiration rejoice evermore it says as you think about what God has done for you come from you from, from, from the creation unto the redemption you go to Calvary you go to Pentecost it says look at Calvary again and see Calvary in and out and see the blood that is shed for you and see the pronouncement of the Lord concerning you forgive them they know not what they do and when you look at Calvary rejoice evermore as you move from Calvary and then you come to Pentecost and you see the power coming down. And you see the tongues of fire. You see that the fire cleanses and purges and washes. And everything is now all right. And when you stay at Pentecost, it says at Pentecost, rejoice evermore. It says, look at the Spirit of God coming upon your life. And the fruit of the Spirit, the love and the joy and the peace. In His love, rejoice evermore. In peace, rejoice evermore. For the hope He has given us in Christ. As we look at what the Lord has done it says rejoice evermore as you stop considering the fruit of the spirit and you're considering the gifts of the spirit the wisdom he gives us the knowledge he gives us the discerning of spirits he gives us and you look at the power of faith and the working of miracles and you look at the healings that take place it says rejoice evermore when he prophesies into your life and he says that your future will be better than your past your future will be brighter than your past in the prophecy that he gives over your life he says rejoice evermore would you then come before the lord and understand that you don't have any time any time that you're going to drop your head in sorrow and then you're going to be wondering what is this and what is that because he's calling upon us at the end of this year rejoice evermore before this year runs up god is going to do something that will convince you that you are going to be rejoicing you rejoice into the new year and then in the new year you keep on rejoicing because of prayers that are answered rejoice evermore for his wise counsel and for his wise leading and for his wise guidance rejoice evermore and see you are not in the prison you are not in the hospital you are not you know buried somewhere you're still alive alive physically and spiritually it says rejoice evermore for your past that is redeemed 
for your presage that is restored and for your future that the Lord is looking at that is renewed. It says because of the past and the present and the future, it says rejoice evermore. The peace, the purity, the power, the reconciliation that he has done for us. It says rejoice evermore. It says because of what you have on earth and because of what you are going to have when you get to heaven. It says rejoice evermore. Come back to this again. First Thessalonians in chapter 5 verse 16. Rejoice evermore. I said rejoice evermore. I said rejoice evermore. You'll keep on rejoicing till the end of your life in Jesus' name. And God will always do something for you to rejoice about. When he says rejoice evermore, can I tell you, number one, the partnership between faith and rejoicing. The partnership between faith and rejoicing. As those Thessalonians saw everything around them. And then some of them, of course, there are people that go through persecution. There are people that have enemies. There are people that have challenges. And then Paul, the apostle, came and he said, rejoice evermore. Paul, apostle, on what basis? On the basis of faith. There is a correlation. There is a relationship. There is a partnership between faith and rejoicing. Number one, then, in the message, is the partnership between faith and rejoicing. Number two is the power of forgetfulness while rejoicing. The power of forgetfulness while you are rejoicing. You see, you come before the Lord and as you come before the Lord, you block everything away from your mind. The sickness that might be there because it will soon go and the challenges that you have faced because that will soon go and all the trauma of life in that state of forgetfulness, you forget your sins, they are forgotten. You forget your weaknesses, they are forgotten. You forget your problems, they are forgotten. And you forget all the devil has tried to do in your life, all the afflictions. Just for this moment, now forget everyone and rejoice. There is power of forgetfulness while you are rejoicing. Number three is the promise of fullness in rejoicing. Because it is as you rejoice before the Lord, it begins to pour the blessings upon you. If you want the fullness of blessing, it's blessing you now. He wants to bless you again and bless you again. It says what you are to do to bring in the fullness into your life is keep on rejoicing. The more you rejoice, the more your cup will be full. And your cup will run over in Jesus' name. Three points we are going to consider then. The partnership between faith and rejoicing. The partnership between faith and rejoicing. Number two is the power of forgetfulness while rejoicing. The power of forgetfulness while rejoicing. Number three is the promise of fullness in rejoicing. Let's come to number one. The partnership between faith and rejoicing. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. We come to this Ethiopian eunuch. He heard the word of the Lord. And there was one thing that uh, he demonstrated when he had the word of God. He manifested faith. And then you will see the connection between that faith for salvation and the joy of salvation. There's always that connection. You cannot have faith and not, and not have joy. Once you have the faith, then you have the joy. You have the rejoicing because of the faith you have in the Lord. Acts of the Apostles chapter 8, we're looking at verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water and, and the eunuch said, see, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, faith, if thou believest with all thine heart, he said, thou mayest. And then he said, I believe that's faith. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That brought salvation. Because the moment you believe and you have that faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, salvation comes to you. Doesn't matter where you're coming from. Doesn't matter what you've done in the past. Doesn't matter whatever it is that has happened in your life. The moment you say, I believe that Jesus is my Savior. I know he died for me. He died on the cross for me. You can say that standing. You can say down sitting. You can say that kneeling down. Once you just send that message to the Lord, I believe you died for me. Your sins are forgiven. They are forgiven in Jesus' name. And that's, what, that's why he said, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And they were told and he commanded 
the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, and both Philip and the eunuch, and he was baptized. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, and the eunuch went, saw him no more, and he went on his way. Tell me out loud. He went on his way rejoicing. He had believed. Believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that salvation has come. The sins have been totally forgiven. And he went on his way rejoicing. Didn't I tell you that faith and rejoicing, they go together. They are partners together. Once you have the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, joy will come into your life. We're looking at Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. This is the, the Philippian jailer. When the Philippian jailer just woke up his saw that all the prison doors were open and the people have lost all their chains. And then he said in verse, in verse 30, and he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe, believe, believe. You see, that's faith. That's all you need. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And thine house and they were told in verse 34, and when he had brought them into, into his house, he set meat before them and what? Rejoice believing in God with all his house. Rejoice believing in God with all his house. He believed and therefore he rejoiced. He rejoiced because he had believed. The faith and the rejoicing came together. We're looking at Romans chapter 5 verses 1 and 2. Faith and rejoicing partners together. In Romans chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 1. Therefore being justified by faith. That's the faith again. By faith we are justified. That is, the Lord looks at you as if, just as if you had never sinned. Forgave all your sins. Take, take, he's taking everything away. And because of that, you say, praise the Lord. I'm not guilty anymore. I'm justified. I'm not condemned anymore. I'm justified. There's no record before the Almighty God that is going to throw me to hell. Because now, all the sins that were made him to throw me to hell, he has forgiven them. He has forgotten them. They are no more remembered to my charge. And because I'm justified by faith, we have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. And tell me the next word there. Rejoice in hope. Do you see that? There's this connection between faith and rejoicing. The moment you come to the Lord and you have that faith in Christ, He is my Savior. He is my substitute. He is the final sacrifice. He took all my sins away. His sacrifice has been accepted by the Father on my behalf. Jesus did not die as a martyr. He died as Savior. He did not die for himself. He died for you. He did nothing wrong to have died for himself. He died just for you. And all the guilt you had, all the condemnation you had, everything was laid on the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he died, it was just because of you. And the moment you accept that, you receive that, say, yes, I'm saved. Yes, I'm born again. Yes, all my sins are taken away because I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That faith will bring rejoicing as the beginning of, the, of joy. Beginning of rejoicing. And that joy, if it has started, it will never end. I said it will never end. We're looking at this in Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. When you have that faith in the Lord, then you just keep on rejoicing. Keep on rejoicing. I'm looking at here from verse, uh, from verse 19. Who against hope believed in hope. He gave hope, believed in hope. The people of the world, they say that case is hopeless. Look at a man, almost 100 years of age, and then the wife, almost 90 years of age, and they have no child yet. The people of the world say that is hopeless. And look at a person that's almost dying, and then he says, I want this, I want this, I need this, and that has never been done. The, the people say, that is hopeless, you'll never have it. But you know, Abraham said, I'm going to keep on manifesting faith because if I keep on believing, my joy will come. My rejoicing will come. As you keep on believing, your rejoicing will come in Jesus' name. Who against hope, believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. So shall your seed be in Jesus' name. 
and be not weak in faith. You see that? Be not weak in faith. The moment you just put your faith in Christ, it doesn't matter the condition of your body or the condition of your place of work, or the condition of the things around you, or the condition of your home, the condition of your family. doesn't matter the condition of your husband, the condition of your wife, the condition of your children. The moment you believe, negative things will turn to positive. The Lord will reverse every negative thing in Jesus' name. And be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. He considered not in his own body. Isn't that what people consider every time you look at the mirror? You consider your body. You look at the doctor's report. You consider your body. You look at the pain you feel in your body. You consider your body. You look at the feeling. You consider your body. You look at what happened uh, you know, a few weeks, a few days ago. And it, it brings them some chill and some fear in your heart. You are considering your body. You look at uh, you know, the way you know, that place is uh, getting numb in your body. You consider your body. And you, look, you consider what they have said. If this is not there, if you don't have a good percentage of this, a good percentage of that, this will never happen and then you consider your body but here Abraham considered not his body all they considered was his God all they considered was the promise all they considered was the ability of God consider the ability of God that thing you are hoping for will come Look at that in verse 20. In verse 20, it says, uh, of verse 19, and it says, Being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. Now dead, well, and when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. After you consider your own body, then you begin to consider the body of your wife, the body of your husband, or the body of you know your loved one that you know you are concerned about him. And then you look at him, then you see the condition. Condition. But you don't consider that when there is faith. Because faith will turn everything around in your life in Jesus' name. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. That's the joy they're talking about there. He considered only faith. Only what the heavenly Father will do. Only the power of the Almighty God. And because of that, he kept glorifying God. They were told in the next verse there, in verse 20, one, it tells us, and be fully persuaded, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. You know, if you are fully persuaded about anything this day, that thing will happen. Yeah. You're praying for somebody to get saved. If you're fully persuaded, that person is going to get saved. Yeah. You're considering yourself. You say, Lord, I need this miracle and that miracle. If you're fully persuaded, that thing is going to happen. It's about your job. If you're fully persuaded, that thing is going to come to pass. It will happen in Jesus' name. It may be that they say you have depression, you have brain problem, you have this challenge, you have this challenge. But if you are fully persuaded, not persuaded about what they say. We're fully persuaded about what God is saying, about the promise of God, about the power of God. If you are fully persuaded this day, this very day, something of joy will come in your life. It says being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform, also able to perform faith and joy, faith and rejoicing, they go together. In Second Chronicles chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 20, Second Chronicles chapter 20, we're looking at verse 20 here, there's been a great problem confronting Jehoshaphat. And then eventually the word came out as the word is coming out to you today. The word of power, the word of his promise, and the word of his provision. And that is going to be fulfilled in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I thought you would say amen to that. Look at this now. He tells us, in a, look at it in chapter 20 of Second Chronicles. And I'm reading here from verse 2. It says, then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea, on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Ezazontama, which is in Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord even out of the cities of Judah. 
they come to seek the Lord. This day we are all over the cities and villages and towns in this our nation Nigeria and then in all the countries we have gathered ourselves together and we are connected by satellite and we come together one because we are celebrating the goodness of God in the past and two because we are celebrating in advance what God will do today. What God will do this week. What God will do as the year is running out. We're celebrating what God is going to start uh, you know, us with in the coming year. Because we're going to remain alive to the following year. Yeah. I say you in particular. You're going to remain alive till the coming year in Jesus name. Yeah. And as they came together, look at verse 20. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God. That's all. Believe in the Lord your God. As we come here today, believe in the Lord your God, and so shall ye be established. Thank God you are established already. And then believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. Anybody prospering there? Where are you? Praise the Lord, I see your face, I see your hand, I see you. All to, yes, you are there. God bless you, you'll prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, believe, believe, that's faith. that's faith. And you remember what you're talking about? We're talking about the partnership between faith and rejoicing. Look at it, verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness, as they went out before the army, and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy, endure it forever. Because they believe. That's why they say, what are we going to do now? Well, well, we know the connection between faith and rejoicing, the partnership between faith and rejoicing. We know the inseparable link between faith and rejoicing. If we have truly believed the word of God, and we're going to be established, and we're going to prosper, there's only one thing for us to do, now sing. And then it says in verse 21, and when they began to do what? To mourn. What, what were they doing? Singing when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. They were just rejoicing because of the combination between faith and rejoicing, the partnership between faith and rejoicing. That's how their enemies were destroyed. All your enemies are destroyed. Because you see, if you will just make up your mind, uh, you know, from today till the end of the year, just, you know, any, anytime you remember something, how about this, how about that, just believe God. And then you say, what's the consequence of believing? Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. And that joy will bring the needed miracle in your life in Jesus. In Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. A merry heart doeth good like medicine. That's all the medicine you need. Rejoice. Merry heart. Merry heart. Singing heart. A worshipping heart. That's all you need. A, a heart that praises the Lord every time. A merry heart doeth good like medicine. This thing will work more than all the medicine shall be swallowing because this one, the merry heart, rejoicing before the Lord will make all things possible in your life in Jesus' name. Anybody uh, that will rejoice over the Will you rejoice? I said, will you rejoice? And then all those mountains are gone in Jesus' name. Point number two now is the power of forgetfulness while rejoicing. The power of forgetfulness while rejoicing. The moment you are rejoicing, you forget your sorrows. You forget all those things. And once you forget them, the joy continues. You are going to find that miracle will happen. A miracle will come just because you decided. You decided, I'm going to forget all those challenges and then I'm going to rejoice it's while you are rejoicing in that forgetfulness that the miracle will come we're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 16 Acts chapter 16 we're reading from verse 23 Acts 16 verse 23 in verse 23 it says and when they had laid many stripes upon them they cast them into prison and then it says, and charging the jailer to keep them safely. 
who having received such a charge thrust them into the inner prison and they were told and they made their feet fast in the stalks that was the condition of Paul and Silas. They were beaten. Not only that, they threw them into jail. Not only that, they even tied them, they tied their legs together into the stocks and abandoned them there. And then the Philippian jailer went away to go and sleep. While the people were suffering, he went away to go and sleep. And what do you think they should do at this time? To begin to count all their losses? And to begin to count all the days that are lost in this kind of persecution and count all the, all the kind of uh, indignations, uh, uh, the, the things done against them, all the pain and all the losses and everything. And then for Paul to think and to say, what am I doing here? I know who I was and I know the way I would take letters of authority in my hand and lay hand on this and lay hand on that. A man of authority and power that nobody could confront. And for me to lie in jail like this? No. He forgot only about that and he began rejoicing. That's what I come to tell you today, that there is power in forgetfulness while you're rejoicing. And he forgot all the beating and he forgot all the persecution and he forgot all the pain. Look at verse 25 and it says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and, and they sang praises unto God. That's the rejoicing right there. Forget your sorrows and those sorrows will be forgotten. I said they'll be forgotten. Forget your pain. And the pain will be forgotten in Jesus' name. Forget your sickness. And the sickness will soon be forgotten in Jesus' name. All the disease. They say it's HIV or they say it's this and that. Forget about it now. And just come in the presence of the Lord. Because it is the forgetfulness why you are rejoicing. That will bring the power of God to walk in your life. And that's what Paul and Silas did. And then they forgot all the things they were going through. And it says they sang praises unto God and the, and the prisoners heard them and then it goes on to say in verse 26 and suddenly and suddenly that's how it will happen to you yeah. going on the road like this suddenly your miracle is there yeah. and just sitting back at home and suddenly the miracle is there and just talking to a friend and you know and you, you wanted to say you, you know I, I went through sometimes something during the week or during the year and as you're talking about it then all of a sudden suddenly your miracle is there in Jesus name and then you're talking about I went to the office and they're saying that they're going to you know lay off this and lay off that but all you're doing is you're not thinking about that you forget all that and you're rejoicing because there's a power that that comes to play in your life, a part that comes to walk in your life, when you forget all that and you are rejoicing in the presence of the Lord. And while you are thinking about that, that you know rejoicing, even though this word is said in your place of work, then they call you for promotion and you are promoted already in Jesus' name. Because there is power in forgetfulness while you are rejoicing. Look at this in verse 26, it says, suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaking and immediately all the doors were open doors of opportunities they are open yeah. doors of release they are open yeah. and the doors of your freedom they are opened in Jesus name and then it says everyone's bands were loosed you know what if daddy is sick, mommy is sick, children, they're not getting on well, and this one has bad character, that one has some, you know, bad things, and then let's say it's just the mother in the home that will just begin to sing and begin to sing, and then the daughter, hearing the singing of the mother, joins in, like we have a, a duet there, while they're singing, all the bands of the members of the family will be loosed in Jesus' name. Would you please uh, do yourself a favor this, uh, you know, from today that, you know, when you are at home, if anything is happening, instead of this one crying, Jesus, 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 instead of that one mourning what has happened, instead of this, uh, let somebody start singing right there in that family. Let another person join with that singing. As the two of you are singing, you are like Paul and Silas. I'm saying that a miracle is going to take place in Jesus' name. Let us invite the power of God by our singing. Singing in the church, singing in the home, singing on the street, singing on the bus and singing everywhere our singing will invite miracles in Jesus name 
and it says immediately all their bands were loose and everyone was set free. You are set free in Jesus' name. And let me come back to this Second Chronicles again. Second Chronicles, I'm still coming back to that chapter 20. I need to find something out there for you because it is the forgetfulness of your problem. All those uh, people were come together in the confederacy, you know, the Moabites and the Ammonites and all these other people, they joined together. And in fact, Joshua said, we don't know what we're going to do. This is too much. This is overwhelming. And then as the problem was almost going to drown them, they said, forget about the problem and just rejoice. And while you get into that state of forgetfulness, the enemies are strong, forget about that. The enemies are mighty, forget about that. The sea of uh, affliction is so deep. We're going to be drowned in this affliction. Forget about that. In that forgetfulness and rejoice, Rejoicing. There's a miracle in your way in Jesus' name. Look at it in verse 12, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12. Verse 12, it says, Oh our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. Neither know we what to do. When you come to a crossroad in your life and you say, Neither know I what to do, I know something you can do. You can sing. I said you can sing. You can rejoice. After all, it says, Rejoice evermore. At home, rejoice evermore. On the crossroad of life, when you say, I don't know what I'm going to do, look at the challenge I face. And all the Lord is telling you is, Rejoice evermore. They said in that verse, I don't know we, what we're going to do, but our eyes are upon the. Look at verse 21 now. And when he had consulted with the people, can anybody give me advice? No, we don't know what we're going to do to do? Can anybody give me some direction there? We don't know what we're going to do. Can anybody help me check up in the encyclopedia of uh, winning wars and winning battles? Can you tell me, give me some advice, give, share with me some of your experience, how I will be able to overcome this? And they said, neither know we what you are to do. And you yourself, neither know I what I'm going to do. When you are so confused, when you are so overwhelmed, when you say, I don't know where to go, I don't know who to call, and I don't know what I'm going to get out of this, there is something you can do, and that is you can sing. I said you can sing, and when you sing, all the battle will be over in Jesus' name. And so when he had consulted, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that they shall praise the beauty of holiness as they went, as they went on before the army, and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth how long? I said, how long? In your own life. How long will the mercy of God endure? In your family, how long will it endure? In our church, how long will it endure? You know, every time you come here, there will be healing. Every time you come here, there is blessing. Every time you come here, the mercy of the Lord will be upon you in Jesus' name. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord said, and bushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Don't you know you have the victory already? Zechariah, I'm looking at chapter 2. Zechariah chapter 2. The Lord is telling us, the victory comes while you are rejoicing in forgetfulness. Forget your sorrows and rejoice. Forget your problem and rejoice. Forget all your problems and rejoice. It is in that rejoicing or forgetfulness that the miracle, the power of God will brought to play in your life. In Zechariah chapter 2 verse 7, it says in verse 7, Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. Why did you go to Babylon? Maybe you, want, you felt that that daughter of Babylon would be able to help you because I hear that this and this. Come away from that strange land. Well, you, want, you know, I went there because of this and because come away. And then, but my problem is still there. Faith and rejoicing, forgetfulness and rejoicing. Keep on rejoicing and forget about the problem. And while you are rejoicing, something good is coming your way. In verse 8, it says, For thus says the Lord of hosts, after the glory, as he sent me unto the nations, which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you, tell me, Touches the apple of his eye. 
you know, you don't understand that. It's like somebody is in front of you, and then you open your eyes, and he wants to poke his finger in your eyes. Your eyelids will cover it up immediately. And that's how you are to the Lord. You are the apple of the eye of the Lord. Any enemy wanting to touch you, he will protect you. He will preserve you. He will not allow anything to touch your life in Jesus' name. And then it goes on to say in verse 9, For behold, I will shake my hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants. And ye sh and, and shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice. Sing and rejoice. You've been in Babylon before. Come out of Babylon and forget what drove you to Babylon, what took you to Babylon, what took you to those false places of worship. And then as you come out, it says, Now sing and rejoice in verse 10. O daughter of Zion, follow. I come and I will dwell in the midst of thee, says the Lord. He will be with you. When you pass through the waters, he will be with you. The waters will not overflow you. When you pass through the fire, the fire will not burn you. Because we are told in Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah 43 verse 1. It says, but now, when? But now, I said when? When is your miracle? When is your protection? All these things we have been hoping for since January. When are you going to have them? But now, thus says the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through, the, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Verse 18, remember ye not the former things. Forget about them and just continue to praise the Lord. That's what I'm talking about. It's in the forgetfulness and rejoicing. Not remembering, this happened, this happened. You know, some people, they sit down and I say, so-and-so did this to me, so-and-so did that to me, so-and-so said this about me, and such-and-such such slandered me. All they remember is the evil that has been done against them. And the Lord is saying, don't remember that anymore. Then I became sick, and then I was oppressed, and nobody visited me. And by that time, they are crying already. The crying will not bring the healing. It is the rejoicing that to bring the miracle in your life and so switch over and then remember them not anymore and then as you rejoice before the Lord praise the Lord, the sun is shining now and the brightness has come to your life already in Jesus name, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old, behold I will do a new thing now it shall spring forth, when will it spring forth? Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? Of course I will know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field shall honor me and the dragons and the owls and because I give waters in the valley and the rivers in the desert. It says to give drink to, to my people and to my chosen, these people. Have I formed for myself, they shall show forth my praise. That's your right there. I said, that's your right there. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Isaiah chapter 41, we're looking at verse 10. It says in verse 10, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will strengthen thee, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Look at verse 15. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small, and shalt make the hills a chaff. Thou shalt fan them and uh, the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. All those problems are scattered. Amen. And thou shalt 
and thou shalt and thou shalt tell me if you are going to do it and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord you rejoice in Jesus name you see it is in that forgetfulness that then the joy comes I'm coming to point number three the promise of fullness in rejoicing the promise of fullness in rejoicing you come before the Lord and you remember the promise of the Lord the commandment of, the precept of the Lord it says rejoice evermore you cannot do all the other things evermore but there's this one thing you can do evermore every time always at all times rejoice evermore and as that joy is uh, coming through from you there will be fullness of the blessings of God of Upon your life in Jesus name. I'm looking at a Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Rejoicing, rejoicing, rejoicing. And then something good uh, comes away already into your life, into your family. Joel chapter 2 verse 21. Fear not O land, be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. That's a secret, that's a secret. Also are rejoicing, also are glad. And so I'm going to rejoice before the Lord. It says, in that state of being glad and rejoicing, the Lord will do great things. I'm looking at Deut Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30, and I'm reading there from verse 9. Joy comes in your life, and miracles in your life, healing in your life. Deliverance in your life, provision in your life, abundance in your life, fullness in your life. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 9. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thy hand, and in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land. For good, the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good as he rejoiced over thy fathers. What the people of old saw and they rejoiced, those things are going to be repeated in your life in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35. You have the fullness because of the rejoicing. You rejoice because there's fullness. And as, as you keep on rejoicing, the fullness will become fuller, even fuller. Isaiah chapter 35, verse 1. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Even the desert where nothing grew before. The churches that did not grow. Well, let's start rejoicing and growth will come. The families that did not prosper, let's start rejoicing and prosperity will come. When you say the desert shall rejoice, look at what follows in verse 2. It says in verse 2, it shall blossom abundantly. That's yours. And rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be, shall be given unto it. The excellency of Camel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of God. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that of a fearful heart be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. He says, if we, if we start rejoicing, blind eyes will get opened. The lame will rise up and walk just by rejoicing, just by rejoicing. Look at that verse 5 again. It says the blind, the, the eyes of the blind shall be open, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. It says we'll get all this, the fullness of miracle, the fullness of power, the fullness of manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit. It says they will come as we rejoice. And then it says, and the parched ground shall, shall become a pool. And the thirsty land springs of water in the habitation of the of dragons, where each lay shall there shall be grass with reeds and with rushes, and then an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. The unclean will not come into your family anymore. 
of clean spirit will not have any residence in your family anymore in Jesus' name. And he says, but it shall be for, the, for those the way fearing men do for shall not err daring. No lion shall be there, not in your family, not in our church. I thought you'll say amen. amen. No, any ravenous beast, destructive beast shall go up uh, thereon. It shall, it shall not be found there, but the redeemed of the Lord shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with song, sander, everlasting joy. Everlasting joy is flowing already. It's running over already. Everlasting joy. And then it goes on to say, it will be upon our heads and they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sign shall flee away. No more there. I said no more there. Our joy will continue. Your joy will continue. Because it says now sorrow and sign, everything will flee away. I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 33. Isaiah chapter 33. Isaiah chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 24. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 24. I'm waiting for you to open that verse because this verse, this is yours. I said this is yours. Because faith and rejoicing to produce something. Forgetfulness and rejoicing, that will produce something. And in the fullness, while you are rejoicing, that's going to get you something. Isaiah chapter what? Isaiah chapter what? And verse what? Who does it belong to? This is mine. And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. Sins forgiven, sicknesses taken away, sorrow gone, heartache gone, backache gone, any ache in the head, any ache in the mind, all that is gone. Depression is gone, madness is gone. All that remains now is joy. I said all that remains is joy and gladness and laughter. Where are the rejoicing people here today? Where are you? I want to see your hand. I can't see you standing up and I can't see you rejoicing, rejoicing. Everything you ever dreamt of is going to be done. Everything that you ever prayed for is going to be accomplished. Because the people shall not say, I am sick. You walk out of this place, you'll not say, I am sick, I'm sick anymore. No, faith and rejoicing, forgetfulness and rejoicing, and the fullness of rejoicing, it has come. Open your mouth and rejoice before the Lord. And let the miracle power flow. Rejoice before the Lord and let the healing power flow. Rejoice before the Lord and let the goodness of the Lord flow. Rejoice before the Lord and let the blessings multiply in your life. Let your voice be heard by the Lord and say, Lord, I'm rejoicing. No sorrow anymore. No heartache anymore. I forget all my problems. There is, there is power in forgetfulness. Forgetting all the problems. Forgetting all the heartaches and forgetting all the sicknesses and forgetting all the enemies. Forget getting everything. I just come and rejoice before the Lord. There is power in that forgetfulness while you are rejoicing. And there's, part, there's partnership between the faith and the rejoicing. I believe the Lord. I believe the Lord. I believe the Lord. I'm rejoicing. I'm rejoicing. And that combination, that partnership, that togetherness, that unity between your faith and the rejoicing will produce something, must produce something in your life. All the heartaches of the past year, they are gone. All the sorrows of the past year, they're gone. All the anxieties of the past year, they're gone. All the worries of the past year, they're gone. All those the plagues of the past year, they're gone. All the incurable disease of the past year, they're gone. They're gone. Don't consider your body. Don't consider your place of work. Don't consider the things that are seen. Just consider how great the Lord is. How gracious the Lord is. How good the Lord is. There is power in rejoicing. There's miracle in rejoicing. There is healing in rejoicing. It reverses all the problems of your life. Because you rejoice, you rejoice, you rejoice, rejoice evermore. Let the barren rejoice, then you'll be fruitful. Rejoice evermore. Let the jobless rejoice, and then you're going to have the, the job because he says rejoice evermore. Let those who are sick rejoice, and your sickness is gone. Rejoice evermore. 
if uh, you've been having those nightmares and bad dreams and it's like your life is being threatened, just rejoice before the Lord. And there's power in that rejoicing. You will praise the Lord. You will praise the Lord. And in that praise, there's power. In that praise, there's healing. In that praise, there's miracle. In that praise, the Lord will praise by His power that flows in your life. Rejoice, 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 rejoice. Even when you don't know what to do, when you don't know what to do, like Joshua, we know not what we're going to do. We know not what, what we're going to do. I'm confused. I'm overwhelmed. I'm confused. I'm overwhelmed. And I don't know what I'm going to do. And when you don't know what you're going to do, there's something you can do. You can sing. You can praise the Lord. You can rejoice. And while you are praising the Lord, that make all power flow in your life. It will flow in your life. It will flow in your life. This is your day. This is your day. This is your day. Come and rejoice before the Lord and forget all these problems. Something new, something new, something great, something marvelous is happening already. Happening already. Happening already. Happening to you. In happiness shall not say, I am sick. For the people shall all be forgiven. Their iniquity, their sin, their trespasses. In Jesus' name we pray. What am I supposed to do? How long? Say that again. At the crossroad, what do you do? When the enemy is knocking at the door, what do you do? When there's any perplexity, what do you do? I'm feeling this thing on my back, what do you do? I just woke up now and then see the kind of dream. What kind of dream is this? What do I do? And then there is persecution. What do you do? I'm hearing the news of this and that from that other place. Oh, they are coming. They are coming. I don't know what I'm going to do in this situation. What do I do? And then here now on this day. What do I do? As I'm going back home, what do I do? And then as I want to sleep in the night and I say, count your blessings and see them one by one. What's the last thing I do before closing my eyes? And I wake up in the morning tomorrow and guess the first thing I do. Rejoice evermore, rejoice evermore, rejoice evermore. And joy will never end in your life in Jesus' name. Raise up those hands before the Lord and Father in the name of Jesus. I thank you today because you have told us what to do and to have our faith and manifest our faith and express our faith before you. Oh Lord, I pray that the power of faith, the possibilities of faith, the potentials of faith will work in every life, even right now, in Jesus' name. All those who have confessed their sins and have said, Lord, I believe, I believe that Jesus died for me to take all my sins away. He is my Savior, my substitute, my sin bearer. I pray that salvation will come into them right now in Jesus' name. And the joy of salvation, the joy of being your child, the joy of sonship will come to them in Jesus' name. Lord, I present every brother, every sister, every boy, every girl, every child before you here today. Oh Lord, I pray you will do something of joy in every life. Do something of joy in every life. Every sickness here, I command that sickness, come out in Jesus' name. Any swelling on anyone there, I command that swelling, come out in Jesus' name. Blindness, and there's no room for blindness in our church anymore. In this congregation, that congregation, all the people that are listening now, those blind eyes and those dim eyes, I pray the power of God will come upon you right now. Open your eyes and see in Jesus' name. Those who are deaf, I pray that the mighty power of God will touch you right now. And then those deaf ears, open right now in Jesus' name. Those who are dumb, oh Lord, I pray you touch their vocal cords and you make them to speak out. Those who are lame, paralyzed, whether it's paralysis uh, because of the spine, because of the backbone, or because of withered hand, or because of your joints, or because of a nerve n- center that is broken down, I command the power of God. I send the power of God upon all your nerves and your joints and your backbone, every part of you. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. 
all those who have any short leg, I pray that right now the mighty power of God will touch that short leg, grow out to become an equal to the other in Jesus' name. HIV AIDS, you have no right to be there anymore. In the presence of the Lord, while we are rejoicing before the Lord, there's no incurable disease. And therefore, Lord, I pray you touch that individual right now. And I pray that all the AIDS on HIV is be cleansed off in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who have any other problem in their body, any other kind of a challenge in their body, as they come before you rejoicing. I pray, Lord, miracles will happen. Miracles of healing. Miracles of deliverance, miracles of provision, miracles of release upon your life in Jesus' name. The brain that is going dead and the brain that is not having any retentive memory anymore. Oh Lord, I pray you renew the youth like the eagles. Renew their brain, renew their mind. That Lord, those who are going to school and they are having difficulties or challenges, I pray that all those challenges will be of the past in Jesus' name. Make them every which whole, spirit, soul, and body, be whole in Jesus' name. Lord, I hear that sister there as we are listening to the testimony of that sister, that in particular that sister that, you know, went to the hospital, they declared her almost dead, and then she came back, and then now she has her own child, and they rejoice in that family, so how oh, I wish I had my own child to receive your miracle baby in Jesus' name. No tears anymore, no weeping anymore. You've got yours right now. And all you all you do to bring it into manifestation, keep on rejoicing, keep on rejoicing, keep on rejoicing. We will celebrate with you in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that everyone here now and everywhere, I pray, Lord, grant them their inheritance. Everything the devil has stolen away from them, restore to them in Jesus' name. I see that person when you are much younger, much younger. I see you in your teens. I see you in your early twenties. You had a big dream. You had a big desire. I will do this. I will do this. I will do this. You came in your thirties, your forties, and then it's like everything is squandered. Then everything is shattered. And then you, you cannot dream like you used to dream. Run like you used to run. And you cannot be excited like I used to be excited. You're not just a reserved person, a backward person, a back bench person. And it's like, you know, I don't have anything to rejoice about anymore. I pray the reverse of that negative condition will come in your life right now. Rise up and rejoice in Jesus' name. The dream that has been stolen, oh Lord, bring the dream back in Jesus' name. The zest in life, the passion in life, the excitement in life, the joy of life that has been taken away from them. I pray, bring everything back in Jesus' name. My sister, over there, I see you. Your marriage is like when you first got married, your husband was fond of you. And it's like you go together, and people even say, they were praying, if my marriage can be like that, if my marriage can be like that, what happened then? And then after some years, it's like everything now is just, you know, it's, uh, it's lukewarm, and then, you know, I go my way, you go your way, and this, and the excitement is no more there. The joy of marriage is no more there. And the real thing that makes, you know, everything to kick is no more there. And then you say, well, I, I thought, I thought I'll enjoy marriage. I thought I'll enjoy family. I thought, I thought, I thought right now, Lord, I pray that same joy of the early years, that same interest of the early years, that same excitement of the early years, that same affection and love of the early years, bring everything back in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray everyone here, everyone here, old and young, or new and old, oh Lord, I pray you'll do something new. You'll do something great. And I pray miracles of every description, miracle of every form, a miracle of every manifestation. Bring upon every life in Jesus' name. I speak power in your life. I speak progress in your life. I speak anointing in your life. I speak deliverance in your life. And I speak prosperity into every life. I speak victory in your life. I speak dominion in your life. But Lord, I pray everyone hearing the sound of my voice now, the day of joy has now begun. The desert will sing. The wilderness will sing. And all those patch grounds will rise up and sing for joy in Jesus' name. Confirm it in every life. I pray, Lord, the next time we meet together, testimony. 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 Let testimony fill your mouth. And fill your family. And fill your home. And fill your local church. 
God in the morning, a miracle. Come back in the evening, miracle. Everywhere you go, your expectation will not be disappointed. Confirm it in every life long. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, As we go now, what do you do? Rejoice evermore.